Number 10, available on all platforms. This is good news because it means that no matter where you bought this game, you will be guaranteed this DLC if you want it. But on the other hand, it could be a big part of the reason behind the delay we seem to be feeling or experiencing when it comes to the Rune DLC. I feel like it's been so long. I actually had to be like, oh man, how long ago did this game come out? I had to relook it up. I forgot. It's so long ago now. Basically, it has been over a year, and we were kind of expecting, I think, that the DLC would be here sooner, perhaps already even. The more platforms a game or DLC is released on, the more time it's probably gonna take the game or the content to be completed. This is because each port requires a little bit of tweaks, and these can be more or less tweaks depending on the engine that you're using to build the game initially with, and if that engine is better for PC or console, and if it's not good for one or the other, you know, what level of tweaks are we talking here? Big ones, small ones, what are we talking about? Releasing something on multiple platforms also usually means that one of the platforms, at least, is going to be uh, a bit janky upon release. Although I feel like glitches in games bother us less now, as we've become accustomed to all games and video game content being some level of buggy upon first release, so, you know. Maybe we don't have to worry too much about that, but I don't know, Security Breach was pretty janky. Gonna be real. <laughs> All right, friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Gaming, if you want more FNAF content, let us know by clicking that subscribe button. When you subscribe, we get closer and closer to Room DLC. Actually, I heard for every time you click subscribe, like you can click it, unclick it, click it again, keep doing that back and forth, a week gets knocked off the Room DLC uh, timeline. So it'll be here sooner. So click it. Number nine, how many is too many? Speaking of multiple ports across consoles, it's important to note that likely part of the delay for the Rune DLC was thanks to Steel Wool Studios also busting their game developing butts to get us the Xbox version of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, which actually only came out late last year, if you could believe that. That's right, that's almost a year after the initial release of this game. Sorry friends on Xbox. And the other thing that might cause you some worry to know is that Steel Wool Studios following their work on Security Breach is not necessarily um, prioritizing the Rune DLC as the studio is actually also working on multiple titles now, having branched out to work on other projects at the same time. So it's not just FNAF, including things like Hello Neighbor 2 DLC and the game Hello Neighbor Search and Rescue. The only good news here is that they have also worked to expand their staff, doubling in size. So that should basically help them, I guess, to work on multiple projects at once and still remain just as, if not more, effective. At least uh, that's what we're hoping for, and I'm sure that's what they're hoping for too, so fingers crossed. Number eight, the protagonist has entered the chat. But who is she? Other than seemingly being the protagonist based on her stance in this poster with her little flashlight, we don't really know who this girl is. Is she Elizabeth Afton, like many people claim, because they think her hair is blonde? Is it even blonde? And if so, if she is Elizabeth Afton, how is that even possible? Or is she someone totally new? And if so, will we like her more or less than Gregory? Will she be just as sadistic? Will she matter to the lore, or will she just be some random character that doesn't really develop? Also, is Gregory coming back? I mean, he's on the poster too. He's probably coming back. I have more questions than answers for you on this point, and for that, I am sorry, but also, uh, that's kind of just FNAF for you, I suppose. Even when we think we know things, really they are all just theories that we take at face value as facts because, well, I mean, otherwise we'd really know nothing about these games. And also, I mean, that's part of the fun. We like to try to follow the clues and then try to figure out what the facts are or could be plausibly. Something that I think could be true and would explain some of the red coloring, perhaps on her shoes, as well as the purple, is that the little girl could have some connection to Vanessa AKA Vanny, I think that could also be a thing. I don't know if other people have been saying that. I haven't been deep into the theories in a little bit, but I feel like I haven't seen that one yet, so I don't know. If that's new, let me know. If it's not new, let me know who else is saying it because maybe I should watch their content more because I'm vibing with that. In its seven Bonnie Bowl battle, I mentioned last time how Freddy doesn't really have a section for a boss fight, since most of the pizza plex is named after other characters. Roxy's Raceway, Chica's Mazer Size, Monty Golf, etc. But a few commenters had the idea that maybe Freddy could have his boss battle inside of Bonnie Bowl. I'm guessing because he was mourning the loss of Bonnie. I mean, it would kind of make sense, but the bowling alley doesn't really have much of a boss arena vibe. It doesn't really have the ability to 
house a boss battle, seemingly. Like with Monty, the boss battle made sense. At least in FNAF's way of making sense. But Freddy in a bowling alley? How are we gonna stop him like that? Get him to, to step on a bowling ball and fall backwards? I mean, it took Monty falling off a catwalk and getting smacked in the face by Will, I mean by a giant bucket, for him to actually get destroyed. So, how would a bowling alley with no net full of hanging bowling balls actually be able to help us beat him? I don't know. It's a nice idea, and I like the thought process as like an homage to Bonnie, but I, I unfortunately don't think it would work. And it's six disguised. YouTube user Canis Rufus Lupus <laughs> I like that name. YouTube user Canis Rufus Lupus suggested in the comments that instead of hiding inside the animatronics or riding on their shoulders, that instead Roxy and Chica could throw disguises over us in an effort to conceal our identity. As they put it, quote, My suggestion was that Gregory would follow closely behind Chica or Roxy in disguise when you're controlling them. Chica would toss a cupcake blanket over the boy's head with eye holes, while Roxy would stuff the boy into a giant foam finger that says you're number one. The security robots would be blind to him. Which, I, I think it's actually a really interesting idea, and that would certainly make for some hilarious moments. Like, imagine Roxy lifting up the cupcake blanket randomly while you're just like chilling with Chica, and then boom, you're done for. But also, this would kind of defeat the whole like power mechanic that they added to kind of nerf the whole glam rock mech thing in the first place. So I unfortunately don't think that they would go with this seemingly um, absolutely amazingly hilarious idea. But but good thinking, Candice. I'm proud of you. That's outside the box. I like it. Halfway through in number five, multiplayer. Now, with a working pizza plex, there comes the idea that doing this with friends would be an amazing time. And honestly, this is one of the things we've been wanting for ages. When a multiplayer FNAF didn't really make sense before, a working pizza plex would make the most sense. Being able to explore the pizza plex during the day with friends and even random people online would be awesome. And honestly, if this isn't in a FNAF DLC, I'm sure someone's going to make this happen in VR chat or rec room or something like that. I mean, like, there's already a mod. But that's where you play as animatronics, and I just I just want a whole load of kids running around the pizza plex, you know, being able to play all the games. However, if this was in the real FNAF game, I think it would be the most beneficial. However, VR Chat is a free game that you don't need VR to play, despite what the name would suggest. So it would be better for fans, unless this came out as like a free DLC of some sort. Which honestly, considering how the game was released unfinished. <sighs> A lot. A DLC that fixed things and then actually gives us multiplayer would actually be nice if it was free, especially if it's just fixing up, <laughs> fixing issues, okay? Anyway, a multiplayer pizza plex would be perfect. And it for daytime mode. Being able to explore the pizza plex during the day is something that I think we can all agree we'd love to see. Being able to actually play these games without the ominous threat of death would be a great addition to this game. I want to play laser tag without having to worry about Chica chasing me, okay? Unless she's chasing me in a romantic way because someone wanting me that bad is kind of goals. But for real, the ability to just mess around the pizza flex during the day would certainly be fun. No restrictions, just full passes or whatever. Or maybe we have to earn tickets to pay for the passes by playing the various arcade games. I think that would be pretty damn cool. Combine this with the multiplayer mode and this would be crazy. Although I guess multiplayer mode would kind of imply that it's during the day since the story doesn't really allow for multiplayer. So let's just assume the daytime mode would just be you on your own. The single player daytime experience, which sounds like a like a really bad sitcom. Like not one that's so bad it's good, but just like a bad sitcom. Mostly because of the name. Number three, not just a concept. Here is something that is less scary to ease the revelation of where Steel Wool was reported to be at in November with this DLC, and how they basically were just past, you know, that concept stage. They went on to say in their announcement, the vertical slice build was the very first one in my career that was a complete actual VC with functional versions of all the gameplay elements and systems we'd intended to build. Our team is absolutely crushing it, and we couldn't be prouder of them. We're fired up and can't wait to share more with you all. This is more promising because it kind of seems like their VC is a, a more of a realized concept anyways. However, once again, I would take even this moment of brief celebration from Steel Wool's executive producer, Ray McCaffrey, with a grain of salt because the fact that a vertical slice exists 
<sighs> Could also be a sign of danger ahead when it comes to what's going on with the Rune DLC and honestly the game studio, Steel Wool Studios itself. Number two, disillusionment. A vertical slice isn't just a tool to be used for developers as a guide when they're building the world and creating the game or the DLC. A vertical slice can also be something that's actually requested by investors. In fact, this can happen when investors actually have no real knowledge of the video game industry and what goes, you know, into building a video game more specifically, or <laughs> when the investors simply um, don't have a lot of confidence in the project based on the knowledge they do have of the studio and their body of work or you know the project in question itself there's just something about it they don't get basically they're like we'd like to see more information like we need a pitch if this is the case with rune and of course it very well might not be the vc could you know just be for in-house development or it could be a routine part of their process in relation to their investors this could be an indicator that either investors are attached to this project who have no clue <laughs> what is getting made here or worse they don't have a lot of confidence in what's being made so it's possible number one silver lining despite this being a scary list. I feel like I need to end this on a high note because at the end of the day, as FNAF fans, we're all hopeful for the continuation of the video game franchise and you know, we want to see it succeed. Successful adaptations, games, DLC, all of this only means that we have a better chance of getting more and more quality content for years to come. Fingers crossed. So what I want to add is that although the vertical slice could be something for us to be worried about, generally speaking. It seems for Steel Wool to be something they actively wanted to improve on because in that same announcement from November 2022 where they updated us a bit, they discussed changes they made as well as things they wanted to personally improve on. One of those things, a major point in fact seemed to be for them, that they wanted to focus on their pre-production process. Now why is this important to note? Why, why does that even matter? Interesting story of the security breach game. It's plot and the execution of said plot it's easy to see how this could actually kind of be the result of poor planning actually like some of the issues in this game could be because their planning phase wasn't as great as it could have been same with some gameplay features such as the vastness of the map which wasn't really utilized as much as I think we'd all hoped it would be with whole areas designed and built into the massive like mega pizza plex but seemingly existing without really having any purpose to serve in the game which you know you could go there and explore it but like you don't really do stuff there so hopefully they're figuring out those kinks. In a 10 non-canon. A lot of people were suggesting a simple fix that would have all of this make sense and it would be just to make the DLC non-canon. And honestly, I don't think that that's even possible. Even if expressly stated that it was non-canon, after the last DLC claimed that it was nothing more than a festive holiday themed add-on with no hidden intent or purpose, and then giving us a whole load of hints towards the next game, none of us would trust Steel Wool or Scott when they said that. No matter what, okay, we would still consider the DLC probably canon. And maybe that's something that we could actually deal with, since after all, there is only one true ending to the game. Assuming this doesn't take place before or after the story, and we still play as Gregory in the game. So, maybe this would actually still be possible. But any endings we end up getting wouldn't be the true ending still. And maybe the true ending would be impossible to get without Freddy. I mean, we could just play through the game until 6am and then be forced to leave and not have the option to stay. And at 9, New Kid. The DLC could easily be explained away by making us play as a new kid who ends up getting stuck stuck in the pizza plex for another reason, which would also explain why we aren't being protected by Freddy, who at this point would have run away with Gregory. They could have rebuilt Roxy's raceway or maybe just have it off limits, and we could play through again using another character as our guardian, at least if they wanted to keep it canon. It would also show us that what Gregory fell into was intended on being a trap. Hence maybe why Vanessa was sus of Freddy, but then after he gets out of parts and service, she doesn't dismantle him again, since that would make Gregory trust him. This could have been how all the children went missing and this would have shown us that, but Gregory was the first one to make it out alive. This idea came from YouTube user Dank Meme in the comments of the Choose Your Guardian video, and that's where most of these ideas actually do come from, but if they're suggested by multiple people, I can't really show all of the comments, but from what I saw, Dank was the only one who suggested a new kid in a rebuilt pizzeria. And it ate sun and moon. Multiple people were also saying that if this was a thing, they would want the sun or moon animatronic to protect them, which is just a whole new level of trauma. Like, that thing needs like a talking to by Chris Hansen or something, cause it's a creepy- Like the fact that he will actively pick this four year old size kid out of a ball pit and then keep dragging you back to the same spot so you can't leave him is just a whole new level of crazy. Like I get that he's an animatronic and he's not really capable of being a pedal bear, but like come on! 
You have to admit, this guy has some creeper vibes. And I'm not talking creeper aw man vibes, I mean like prison predator vibes. Like why would you want this thing to protect you? I guess we have to protect our investments, but like in this context, uh, that's absolutely terrifying. Plus, Sun and Moon doesn't really have a reason to leave the daycare. And when they're in their moon form, they just want to put you back to bed. Okay, damn, I didn't actually realize how really creepy this thing was. I mean, like his first words are naughty, naughty boy. So it should have been a dead giveaway. Number 7, Vertical Slice Completed. In an announcement that Steel Wool Studios shared on their site, they mentioned that the process for Security Breach Rune was going well, and that they were moving ahead of schedule. But, <laughs> Don't get too excited. They simply stated, and I quote, We don't have any gameplay details that we're ready to share, but we can talk about where we're at in development. Pursuant to growing our processes, the Security Breach team spent significant time in rigorous pre-production process, focusing on streamlining our ability to construct fun, stable gameplay. So far this year, we have delivered on our vertical slice milestone earlier than planned and are ahead of schedule for a major upcoming development milestone. What does that mean? What is a vertical slice? <laughs> a vertical slice or VC is basically um, like a pitch for a game, a concept of a game. This is what game developers use usually to get investors hooked on the game in order to, you know, raise enough funds, collect in the money so that they can then, you know, bring that game to life. So, what does that mean? It simply means that Steel Wool Studios has their concept down. Well, not only that, it was actually completed ahead of schedule. So, while that's, you know, promising to hear ahead of schedule, we like that. It is a little frightening to know that they reported this in November of 2022, so it's only a few months ago. So, I mean, if that just happened, and I mean, we don't really have a clear timeline for when the VC was completed, admittedly, we might still be pretty far out in terms of design and gameplay features, because, you know, that's a concept. So, we can work with that, it's something. But it's not, it's not like, oh, in like two weeks it'll be done, just polishing it up. Number six, it's free? I think this is one of the scariest things I've actually heard about this DLC, and I'm gonna tell you why. I know what you're thinking. Amanda, don't we want this DLC to be free? Isn't that nice? Then we save money, which means we have more money to undoubtedly spend on more video games, yay. And aren't we owed this in some way after Security Breach was not quite as good as we expected? First of all, no one is really ever owed almost anything. You paid for a game, you got a game, there were parts you didn't like, that's unfortunate, but it doesn't mean anyone actually owes you a thing more than what you got. Unless it was, you know, it may be helplessly broken or unplayable in some way. Then they probably owe you something, because you bought a game, you don't really get a game because you can't really play it. Secondly, I'm worried about runes being free because it makes me think it will be shorter than what we're hoping for. And granted, it's been in the works for what feels like forever. I mean, if it releases in December, it'll be like two years since the initial release of Security Breach. But what if it's not a whole other additional story? What if it's like just cosmetics somehow or something ridiculous? Or like a small like extra chapter? Like what if it's 10 minutes of game? I don't know. When things are free, it just makes me nervous that it's because the product can't actually be considered worth paying for. Because like, why are you giving this to me for free? Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm just the same person, someone's like, this is free, I'm like, what's wrong with it? I don't know, I've been burned too many times from free content and items, I guess. Halfway through into number five, Guardian Vanessa. The idea that Vanessa could be your guardian is interesting, but considering how she is also the main antagonist, you'd be left alone for various parts of the game. Which I mean is already the case with Freddy, since he can't enter places like the West Arcade. But since, thanks to the CDs at the end of the game, we know that Vanessa knows there's something going on with her, and that she knows Glitchtrap is watching, I don't really think that she'd try and help us in any scenario. Like, hell, if she was really trying to do her job, she would have opened the gate at the beginning of the game and then went on the intercom to tell us to get the f out. Plus, she locks us in the lost and found room, or security room, or whatever it is, knowing full well that her other half could take over at any moment and come after us. And look what it does. It takes over her and comes after us. She also says that she called the cops, but she clearly didn't. So I don't think Vanessa would be down to help us, unless she was doing it to try to be selfless when she's being controlled, but even if she was, Afton could take over and then just grab you instantly, so. 
and at 4 Custom Night. An idea brought to us by commenter Barbarian Goose, quote, If anything, Steel Wool should add a Custom Night where you choose your Guardian as like a little fan service with the main DLC. And I think that this could be a good idea. Not making the DLC revolve around that, but maybe making a small section where you play as another animatronic Guardian. Or, uh, but maybe they each get you out before the doors close at 12, or, or something similar so it wasn't the full game again, because if it is the full game, it's not a small section. Because if we're being honest, like having to do this again for the whole game would be an absolute nightmare, and they already released the main game unfinished. So I think that the, a small section of story without the open world thing would be a nice way for fans to understand what would happen to the story if the various characters were our guardians instead of Freddy. Or maybe even as like a nightmare segment or something. Like if you choose to leave the pizza plex at the end, instead of just getting killed by Vanny, we'd also have a nightmare about if one of the other animatronics was guarding us. Maybe an unplayable cutscene or a small playable section, just to make the fans who want this idea to happen happy. But again, it would increase the whole Gregory writing Foxy art just a little too much in my eyes. Getting close to the end in number three, Phaser Blast Battle. While some people were saying that Freddy's boss battle would be at Bonnie Bowl, others suggested a battle at Phaser Blast. There, are you happy I said it right for once? But I like saying Phaser, okay, so leave me alone. Which does kind of make sense, since it's seemingly the only location aside from the Pizzaplex itself to really be connected to Freddy directly. And while you do have to go there for the story as well, I guess it's possible that they add a boss battle in here instead of playing the normal Phaser Blast game. Like, you know, like how they had it when like Chica was running through there, but instead this time it could be Freddy and we had to handle him. It wouldn't be as awesome of a fight as Freddy would really deserve, but it would kind of make sense given that it would really feel like the animatronics were trying to stop you. But it would really make one section of the game easier, just like if this battle was in Bonnie Bowl. Since we have to go here for the story, getting the Faz camera would just be easier in the long run, since it doesn't end up in a boss battle. In my opinion though, the uh, the phaser blaster is better, so maybe it would it would be a way to balance the game easier. And number two, character endings. I feel like the concept of additional endings was already obvious, but I did see multiple comments suggesting character specific endings, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, in the end, there would still only be one canon ending, so maybe this kind of DLC wouldn't really do much harm. But with everyone reading into everything so much, I still think that this would cause more problems than it solves, like I said earlier. However, the character's specific endings, while not being the canon ending, could help provide more insight into the canon of the actual story. Like if Monty's ending revealed a bit about what happened to Bonnie, or if Roxy ends up breaking down emotionally or something. I don't know how she contributes to the main story. And I think that Chica's ending would just be her getting all the pizza of her dreams. And of course, having me by her side. The man of her dreams. <laughs> I don't know why all of you are suddenly like so hard for Roxy, but, but Chica's my main girl. And I, I'm not letting anyone take that away. Not even you, narrator, all right? You guys can have the self-centered, egocentric Roxy because that's not the Afton virus doing that. That's just the personality of the animatronic. So you can deal with someone who loves the mirror more than they love you, and I'll be with someone who loves pizza just as much as I do. It's called priorities, okay? And finally, in at number one, Roxy's hair. Now, an overwhelming amount of comments were saying that Gregory could hide in Roxy's hair instead of chilling on her shoulders. But they didn't know how he would hide in Chica. So I figured it was a worthy number one spot. I mean, like, Roxy does have long hair, right? Well, yes, but the thing is, I, I, I see multiple issues with this that just make this idea seemingly impossible to me. Firstly, if Roxy's hair is meant to be like actual flowing hair and strands in universe, there would be nothing for Gregory to really hold on to unless he was holding on to her neck or something, which would be an interesting mechanic since if you're around the other animatronics for too long, maybe they'd see Gregory's arms or feet poking out from behind you. But also, have you ever had hair in your face? Whether it's dog, a significant other, your own, having hair in your face is one of like the worst feelings ever, especially if it's unwanted. And Gregory wouldn't want that, assuming that he isn't simping for Roxy like all of you nasty motherfuckers are in the comments, okay? Y'all are simping harder than Will Smith. That's all if her hair was actual individual strands, but looking at the gameplay, it, it doesn't seem to be. It's multiple different seemingly plastic long triangles that end up making up her hair, and I doubt that you'd be able to climb inside that without cutting yourself up more than Afton in a spring lock suit. So unless they just didn't want to simulate Roxy's hair physics, I don't think that this is possible. Unless you are all saying this because it's like a kink thing, which is 
unfortunately very possible. In at 10, Foxy's return. Foxy was also missing along with Bonnie this time around. However, with the inclusion of Roxy, who seems to be like a, the Sephora version of Foxy, we didn't really seem to miss them all that much, especially since Roxy also runs hella fast, basically just being a gender swapped form of the lovable Fox. However, seeing Foxy make a triumphant return could be an interesting concept for a DLC. Maybe he was having a form of like lover's spat with Roxy, and then that's why she keeps telling herself that she's beautiful and the best because Foxy broke her heart or something. I don't know. I I don't think that they would do that just because of all the horrific fan art that it would generate. Like, yeah, of course there is already fan art about this, but having it confirmed as canon would make everyone go absolutely nuts. God, I'm actually I'm actually shaking at the thought of that. That sounds like a horrible idea. Anyway, lots of fans have already modded or put Foxy into the game some way or another, so clearly it's an in-demand idea. And honestly, if we did something like the whole missing animatronics showed up for a full-on battle royale with the new ones, I think that that would be epic as hell. Freddy Mech for the win. In a 9 arcade conspiracy. That's right, I'm talking about this again. The arcade conspiracy gets its name from one of the lore duffel bags that we can find where we learn that something else seems to be going on here. I'm gonna keep making that joke every single time. Quote from the arcade conspiracy note. Exit interview. They are working together, the arcades. They're hiding something. The glitches. Glitch them all at the same time. Then the princess will recognize me. She's testing me. I am not yet worthy. The others are protecting it. Let me stay. I am so close. Just just one more night, please. I can save the princess. Now it's clear that this seems to be referring to the Princess Quest games, however, it doesn't seem like we have to glitch out those arcade cabinets in order to get their ending. We just have to beat them in order from 1 to 3, and then boom, we save Vanny. So what could this really mean? Well, there are three other arcade machines that seem to be having mysterious glitches or there's something wrong with them as well. The Balloon Boy World game that you can find in the secret room in the theater, Chica's Feeding Frenzy, which won't turn off even when unplugged that you're supposed to be able to find in the bakery and the Monty Golf A arcade game that is according to its duffel bag shouldn't be in the mini golf area but somehow is. However, while you can play both Balloon Boy World and the Monty Golf game, Chica's Feeding Frenzy isn't actually playable. You can only access it using a mod menu that lets you cheat it in from the main menu. So adding in this arcade cabinet could mean that there's something bigger going on here than a simple DLC, which honestly I would love. And currently my uh, my high score is still th th uh, 14 for Monty Golf, where the lowest score is 13, so still feel pretty good about that. And it ain't VR. I don't care how many of you are against it, I am actively hoping that like how Help Wanted got a flat screen version, that Security Breach will get a VR version or port or whatever you want to call it. Is it likely? No. Do I want it? Yes. This game was pretty fun normally, okay? But in VR, I think that this would be one of the most intense and exhilarating VR games that I've played. Aside from Bladed Sorcery, but that's just because it awoke something within me. Some of the cutscenes would need to be modified, probably by giving us a third person perspective instead of the normal first person. But other than that, I think it would be incredible. Like, imagine playing Phaser Blast in VR against Mommy Chica. Bro, all the Vanny simps would let themselves get killed. And then, and then I could have some fun walking around as Freddy, pretending to be invincible and punching animatronics. I really want this, okay? It may be complicated to do, but I'm willing to wait, damn it. But exploring the Pizza Flex in VR is kind of goals. I know that there are like VR chat and rec room maps that let you do this, but they're not the real deal, man. Combine this with some of the other ideas on this list and oh boy, would it be an amazing experience. Whoa, doggies. I know that they said they wouldn't do it, okay? But Scott says a lot of stuff that he doesn't mean, so. And it's 7 Secure and Neutralize. Now the Secure and Neutralize concept comes from Knitter user the Silver Sea, and how they describe it is basically a pacifist route, where instead of playing through the story and destroying the other animatronics, you'd instead be able to befriend them and remove them from the game, basically. At certain points in the animatronic boss fights, you'd be able to choose whether or not you commit to the destruction of the animatronic, and if you choose not to, the pacifist route would start. After choosing not to kill, you'd strategize about how to take the animatronic down, which would already be determined in the story, but like for story purposes, you'd have to figure it out. Maybe Freddy would offer a suggestion. Then you'd remove the CPU that Afton is using to control the animatronic out of their back, and the animatronic would reboot. After rebooting, they'd have no memory of what happened, and then you'd be able to leave them back to Rockstar Row and put them in their changing station or green room for the rest of the game. This concept is actually pretty interesting, and if you want to read more about it and get more in detail that I can't actually get into in this video because it's a top 10, uh, the link 
for this will be in the description if I can remember. <laughs> if not, yell at me in the comments. And at six, Daycare Redo. The Daycare Redo DLC concept comes to us from FNAF Wiki user Glitched Morals, saying that they came up with a side quest with benefits called the Daycare Redo. Quote from the post, here's how it works. Instead of being pushed out of the slide when attempting to go back into the daycare after being banned, there is an option to talk to the son. Gregory can apologize for breaking the rules and ask if there is anything that he can do to make it up to him. Son will send Gregory on a few missions to do certain things, like bring back a certain item to him or clean up the play structures that he knocked down. They will need access to a cleaning or janitor pass, which can be obtained from a present box. And if Gregory does all of these missions, he will have Son's trust back, which will result in a few benefits. He will have full access to the daycare again, which will have extra secrets and collectibles to actually have the full access be worth it. Play structures are now new hiding spots for hiding from animatronics. You'll have access to a new room that is the daycare storage room. In that room is extra structures and toys that are found in the daycare. Presents and duffel bags will also be in this room. Sun will give Gregory a daycare night pass, which will result in the moon no longer chasing Gregory anymore, even when the lights are off. And Sun can be interactable, and with him, Gregory can watch different movies in the fast theater, play hide and seek, and other mini games. Honestly, this seems like a pretty solid idea and actually a pretty interesting one so good job glitch morals the link to this post will also be in the description if I can remember. Number five, a new foe, or perhaps a new ally. Some have taken to using the poster to basically decode what this game is really about, when it takes place, who's in it, who's the main character, who are all of the characters. Of course, at the end of the day, it's just a poster. So, I mean, it's kind of hard to accept all of the wild theories and all of the things people seem to be coming up with to answer these questions. But one that I do feel has some merit and that we can classify as kind of a no on some level is the new enemy that people are spotting in the poster. In the top left corner of the promotional poster, if you haven't seen this yet, there are two glowing red eyes. Or, I mean, what appear to be red eyes. We don't really know if they are, but they definitely look like that. Now, while Vanny also has red eyes, so did the blob we saw at the end of the game. And many are thinking that these eyes seem to kind of line up with the seemingly amalgamated blob entity we saw a little bit more than Vanny, which I also personally see. Interesting counterpoint though to this being the potential main enemy of the next game, what if this is actually our ally in the game? I mean, after all, the blob did kind of save our butts in the end in Security Breach, whether intentionally or simply because it had its own vendetta against Afton. I'd be curious to know why specifically if it is our enemy, it, it like wants to be our enemy, especially if we're playing as like a nameless girl who maybe has no connection to anything. Unless maybe this girl happens to be an Afton and then I mean, maybe. I mean, did she do something terrible though? She's just a girl, so I don't, I don't know. More sadistic than Gregory, she is just like William Afton, murdering people left and right. <laughs> goodness. Number four, 2023. Okay, this isn't too scary, admittedly. I mean, this does mean we can probably expect the game later this year, at some point, right? Well, what if that isn't true? <laughs> After all, dates get pushed back all the time, especially when you only have a month and a year expected release date for video game projects. And this is a project that we don't even have both of those things for as of yet. All we know is the year. 2023. I also just feel like not having even a month guideline means that it's likely we're not going to see this game for a while or this DLC for a while. Even if it's not pushed to next year, we could have to wait until maybe the end of 2023 in December to see the game. I mean, if we only know it's being released this year, it could be released, keep in mind, as late as December 31st, 2023, because that would still be 2023. And that honestly feels right now, that feels really far away. Like it was just December a minute ago, so we got a ways to go. Maybe not scary, but definitely a little bit depressing to think about when it comes to just how little we know in terms of this DLC's release date, or you know, lack thereof, I guess I should say. Getting close to the end in number three, Burn Trap. With everything that was left up in the air about Burn Trap's ending, us being unsure whether he's actually dead or if the blob decided to save him, Getting to see more of Burn Trap or even more of Burn Trap's story, maybe some explanations as to what happened in between the games, or maybe even some potential backstory to the character of William Afton, would surely be greatly appreciated by the community. If there's anything that I've learned by talking about this series every day for a year, the community doesn't like talking about any theory that isn't what they've already believed to be true, and they'll consider these theories canon and proven, despite them not actually being confirmed. 
So, literally anything getting confirmed about this character would be a win in my eyes, especially if we finally get to see William officially die on screen. You have no idea how much I would love to watch William finally kick that sweet, sweet bucket on screen. Ha! Huh. Better than any orange YouTube video ever. But ultimately, in at number two, Inspector Gregory. Bonnie was missing from Security Breach, having been destroyed most likely by Monty, but perhaps getting to investigate Bonnie's disappearance and being able to change how things go with the Security Breach lineup would certainly be an interesting mission. If we were meant to like truly investigate this, turning the DLC into a bit of a detective game, I think that would be a really compelling and fun storyline. And from what I've seen, we all want justice for Bonnie, especially since we want Papa Freddy to be reunited with Bonnie since he seemingly really misses him. Considering the dialogue from the first recharge station at least, when Gregory asks about Vanny, and Freddy says, there is no bunny in this pizza plex, not anymore, in a very somber way. Plus, I mean, I've seen enough animatronic alligator thirst traps on TikTok that I kind of want Monty gone. Yes, it was only the one thirst trap, but it was for Monty, okay? It's rough, man. Well, okay, there was only one for the actual animatronic, there was more for like cosplays of the animatronic, but like, dear God. And finally, in at number one, choose your guardian. I'm pretty sure you all wanted this, and I'm pretty sure it's the thumbnail for this video. Currently, the Choose Your Guardian concept is the most popular idea for a Security Breach DLC. Well, at least from ideas that came from fans. The idea behind this was that you'd play through the story again, but this time you'd choose which animatronic would come to defend you instead of Glamrock Freddy. The post on Reddit by user SpaceBear suggested Chica and Roxy, with Roxy carrying you instead of hiding inside her stomach. However, unfortunately, I don't think that this idea is very likely. Despite jokes in the Help Wanted DLC that the DLC was not a canon addition to the game and it had no hidden intent or purpose, th this was not the case. Then we know that the DLC is canon and had hidden intent and purpose. However, this DLC, the Choose Your Guardian DLC, would cause too much chaos to the story to actually work well. It would just make too many things confusing and there is no way that they would make a non-canon DLC in my mind. But I do like this idea and I think that it should be a mod. We can probably make it work in some way, I'm certain of it. Like, you, you'd need the voice lines, but I'm pretty sure there are some fans that would be able to recreate the voice for the mod. Getting the actual voice act would probably be a little too expensive for a mod, but yeah, unfortunately, I don't think this is very likely, but hey, maybe it's a good pop. Now, as I just mentioned, Roxy's body isn't really all that big, and while Gregory is able to fit his entire body in a hole that is just over 14 inches tall in Glamrock Freddy, I still don't know how that works, I don't think that he'd be able to fit himself inside of Roxy's tiny torso. But considering how she's the fastest animatronic sprinting at you when she sees you or even hears you after her destruction, it's safe to say that maybe the mechanic would instead be riding on her shoulders which would make for better movement speed since she wouldn't have to worry about crushing you while you're inside, but also adding more vulnerability since the other animatronics would be able to see you on her and would follow. This would also make for way too much fan art of Gregory riding Roxy, more than there already is. Honestly, you search up Glam Rock and you see Get Your Glam Rocks Off, and I wish I was kidding. But the question is, how would Roxy be the one who glitches instead of Freddy? Since the story seems to be, at least currently, that Freddy glitched is because the spirit of Michael senses a little brother in Gregory, or maybe even senses that Gregory is his little bro. But assuming that that's just a theory, eh? 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 How would they work this into the actual, like, canon? Like, Gregory can't really hide inside Roxy's stomach after all, so how would he be able to get into her green room? My best guess would be something having to do with her insecurities. Maybe Gregory overheard her and then followed her into the green room to help her. Or maybe since he still needs to be scared of Vanessa, he turns Roxy against Vanessa by saying that the security guard is calling her ugly and saying that Sheik is the prettier animatronic. At least Roxy would be down for destroying the other animatronics in that case, as long as she gets to stay pretty. Monty's gameplay would seemingly be the most like Freddy's, with his wider torso allowing for Gregory to hide inside, but really, I can't see this character being sympathetic towards a kid at all. Like, he's got a very rock star attitude, and I'd only see him helping Gregory if Gregory was doing stuff for Monty, you know? Like, if Monty was decommissioned or something by Vanessa for destroying his green room, and then Gregory got him working again. That's really the only way I would see these two working together, although this would come with the benefit of Monty's claws already 
already working. Unless for story and gameplay reasons, they gave that upgrade to Freddy and said that he needed it to hold on to the microphone better or something, or maybe like turn it on, something like that. Either way, I don't think Monty would mind that, especially since he would get to destroy Freddy. Something that we see from both the van ending and in the last level of Monty Golf, he's more than fine with doing. He might not want to hurt Chica or Roxy, because of course every great rock star needs their backup singers, but he would certainly help you with Freddy. Which brings up the problem of where Freddy's boss battle would be. Obviously he'd be the other option between Chica and Roxy, since Roxy's eyes are too overpowered to keep for the long haul. However, Freddy seemingly doesn't have his own area. Chica has the kitchen, which is where her battle takes place, because she loves pizza, but she also has Mazer size. Monty has a mini golf course, and Roxy has a racetrack. So where would Freddy have his boss battle? My best guess would actually be Phaser Blast. Sure, we have to avoid Chica while we play, but assuming we're playing with someone else as our guardian, it would make the most sense for Freddy to be here. Plus, the disassemble ending could be very useful here, since we could use the staff bots Vanny uses in that ending as like our way of destroying Freddy. Maybe he'd end up knocking the remote down or something, and then we could take it and say disassemble Freddy, or something like that. That might cause some issues with the whole Chica thing, because then you have to go to the Bonnie Bowl to get the whole Monty mix to crush Chica, but I mean we could move Monty's mix into Monty Golf, because I feel like that would also make sense. Chica would have to operate in much the same way as Roxy would in this fictional scenario, with us most likely being carried around on her shoulders. And while she may not be as much of a sprinter as Roxy, she can certainly move quickly. If we're giving difficulties to the animatronics, I think that Chica would definitely be like the hard mode out of all of these, since she doesn't really have any unique abilities. Maybe the voice box would be in included, but that's something needed to unlock the main boss room, so it would kind of break the story and make it way easier. So maybe instead they could work it out so Freddy would have like a good voice box that we could steal, so that maybe Chica would instead soothe the animatronics, or maybe after we damage him, his voice box goes from good to broken, and then it just screeches like the original. But other than that, I don't really know how this would work. Like, I don't know how this would be different. Like, maybe instead of the whole screeching Chica's ability, she'd be able to move us around in a hiding spot, like if it had wheels, since uh, there are more wheels than doors. I mean, since Chica loves food, seeing her move around garbage or recycling bins may not be an unusual thing. Like, maybe she's just bringing it back to snack on in her green room. So if we were hiding in one of the various bins, maybe while inside we could call her over by pushing Q, and she would end up, like, grabbing on to the hiding spot and kind of like pushing us around as long as there was enough space for it. So obviously like smaller ones would be more maneuverable but also more suspicious. I don't know. Obviously other animatronics could still inspect the hiding spot while she's holding it and if Vanessa saw her she would absolutely inspect it. But other than that I think that the whole mechanic where she pushes you around would be an interesting addition and it would make Chica a unique guardian and set her apart from Roxy since at that point they were kind of the same thing. Although it would certainly make make things interesting if we're all like, oh yeah, mommy Chica's pushing around Gregory in a stroller. Oh no. Obviously, if this were the actual DLC, Freddy would just end up replacing whatever animatronic was guarding you within the story, so if you chose Roxy, he would have the eyes, etc. Like, they'd have to find a reason for it, but I mean, like, in my humble opinion, it seems wrong if Freddy isn't the one protecting you. But this absolutely would be a fun DLC concept, but hey, if they don't do it, we can always mod it into the game, right? Right? Just like swap a couple models around and then you're good to go. There are also some seriously dope voice actors out there who love the series and I'm sure they would want to help out. Or maybe some voice actors are looking to add stuff into their portfolio so they can get more work. Who would be willing to help? I mean, like maybe the, the Freddy voice could be fairly easy. TikTok has been doing it as a trend and if TikTok can do it, I'm sure we can do it for a mod. So like maybe it's not such a long shot for a mod after all, like I originally thought. But why am I suggesting a mod though? Because unfortunately I don't think that this DLC concept is going to get made, okay? I hate to say it, but while it is an incredible and extremely fun idea, the DLC that they do add to this game would most likely be canon to the main series of games. In fact, we haven't had a main series game that wasn't canon. And despite the last DLC claiming it was nothing more than a festive holiday themed add-on with no hidden intent or purpose, we know better than that. And making it so that any of these characters could protect you would probably ruin the story in some aspects and make the next game harder to set up. And while FNAF 4's Halloween DLC at the time that it came out was claimed to be non-canon with the exception of Nightmare Balloon Boy, Nightmare Eon and Nightmare Mangle did end up making it into Ultimate Custom Night, which would mean that Crying Child would have 
seen them. So eventually, even if they weren't at the time, they did end up being coming canon eventually. Meaning that since this would mess up at least like the story that we understand from the games, with the exception of like the canon ending, but like then again, it's still kind of weird. If we're right or even on the right track about what the story is, I don't, I don't think that this would honestly be possible. It would honestly kind of come out of nowhere. It would kind of come out of left field story wise, unless they end up making it a DLC because everyone is asking for it rather than a DLC that will actually help answer some of the questions we have from the game since they might want to keep things vague and open ended for whoever is taking over next. But I guess then again, we'll see when they announce a DLC, if they announce a DLC. I'd still prefer a daytime mode though, or even secure and neutralize from the, the DLC top 10 list. <laughs>